There are few rivalries in the world as complex or as fierce as the battle between Boeing and Airbus. While Boeing is the older company of the two, both firms have been around for decades, developing the majority of the commercial aircraft that we travel on. Today we'll look back at the long-standing competition between these two manufacturing giants. The Beginning – How Airbus and Boeing Became Rivals All stories have a beginning, and for Boeing and Airbus, it starts with the founding of the latter. Airbus came into existence through the development of the A300 aircraft. State-run or state-influenced airlines in the 1960s wanted to upgrade their aircraft to the next generation of jets. They had a mix of Boeing 707s and others at the time. However, there weren't any suitable European aircraft available on the market to satisfy their needs. European governments wanted a slice of the growing airframe market, but Boeing and other builders were too big for any single European firm to take on. Thus, they formed a conglomerate of European firms to build an aircraft with the express purpose of competing with American plane manufacturers. This conglomerate would become Airbus, and they would bring to the market the A300 as a Boeing rival. From here, the race was on. Il n'y avait pas de stratégie compliquée, c'était d'aller au charbon quoi, et d'être partout. Surtout, on avait dû décider qu'il fallait surclasser Boeing. C'est-à-dire que si Boeing envoyait pour la dernière visite son directeur commercial, c'est ce qu'il faisait normalement, c'était d'ailleurs son boulot, ben, Airbus a dû se envoyer le président. Building a competitive portfolio of aircraft. Right from the get-go, the European government had a plan to build a series of aircraft to compete with each Boeing offer. Once the A300 and its variant, the A310, were complete, various tenders were sent out for a competitor to the Boeing 747 and Boeing 737. Interestingly, each tender failed to secure a new consortium on the market and defaulted back to Airbus, who logically, in retrospect, should have had the contract first. From the mid-80s to mid-90s, Airbus would go on to develop the A320, A330 and A340. Boeing hits back. By now, Airbus had become Boeing's arch-rival in the commercial aircraft marketplace. While both firms were publicly friendly to one another, they were also very much in competition. Thus, Boeing needed a new aircraft to compete and regain its advantage in the marketplace. The Boeing 777 was to be the perfect aircraft platform to rival the Airbus A330 and A340 series. Boeing consulted with several airlines to design the aircraft, its technological improvements actually managed to undercut sales of the A340 dramatically. It hit the spot. I mean, it was the right airplane at the right time. The airplane was a winner right from the start. So it's exciting to see what the customer's expectation was and how that expectation with the reality of the airplane really grew in what the airplane could do. Deciding the future direction of aviation. At this point, Airbus and Boeing faced a crossroads. With air travel demand on the rise, the firms had to design a new aircraft fit for the future of commercial air travel. Airbus chose to go bigger by building the A380 to compete with a Boeing 747. Its focus would be on hub-to-hub -hub travel. Boeing decided to focus on creating a more efficient aircraft, specializing in point-to-point -point operations. Thus, it would develop the twin-engine Boeing 787. The Airbus A380 was a game-changer in the market, able to carry more passengers than ever before, allowing airlines to dominate high-volume, long-haul routes. The Boeing 787, however, was fuel-efficient and allowed airlines to reduce costs. It also made longer-range, lower-volume routes more profitable. With rising fuel prices tipping the market towards the Boeing 787, the A380 never achieved its full potential. In this case, Boeing's strategy proved to be the winner, creating an aircraft that airlines would benefit most from. Airbus would follow the success of the Boeing 787 with the Airbus A350, the successor to the A340. It would also update its popular A330 to produce the Airbus A330neo. Recent events hit both firms. This video would be a miss not to discuss crucial events that have occurred in recent history. The crashing of two Boeing 737 MAX aircraft have dramatically changed the narrow-body landscape for the two competitors, but not for the better of either. It's clear that Boeing's reputation has taken a significant hit. However, there were proportionately very few airlines that changed orders or decided to move away from the American firm. 
This may have something to do with the fact that Airbus has a colossal backlog of aircraft, and it would be too expensive for Boeing's airlines to change to an alternate product. For starters, this would mean that all crew would need retraining. It's also likely that Boeing has cultivated strong relationships with its airline customers and has pledged to take care of them until the 737 MAX situation is resolved. The current aviation crisis in 2020 has also dropped the demand for new aircraft. With many countries under lockdown and international travel significantly hampered, it's unknown what long-term impacts this will have for both airframe makers. If their customer airlines go out of business, then it won't matter which firm is better. What is the competitive landscape like between the two airframe builders? Competition in the narrow-body market Beginning with the narrow-body marketplace, we can see one significant rivalry here, the Boeing 737 versus the Airbus A320 family. Technically, the Boeing 757 also competes with the A321 XLR, but the former is no longer in production, and the latter isn't flying yet. Both the A320 family and 737 series have been updated over time with new engines, winglets and other improvements to remain competitive. These advancements have helped these two narrow-body lines remain incredibly popular. Looking at sales, the Boeing 737 has held the crown for the longest time as the best-selling commercial aircraft, only eclipsed by the Airbus A320 in the last year. The race between the two types is now so tight that it's almost impossible to determine a winner. The A320 was designed as a Boeing 737 competitor and has done its job marvellously. However, we can't ignore the original 737 design, which has won hearts and changed the aviation industry for decades. Had both aircraft been released at the same time, we might have been able to crown a definitive winner, but it would not be fair to compare them on the market performance today. As for the future of this narrow-body competition, the ball is now firmly in Boeing's court to create a successor for the 737 design in the next decade, one that can rival the A321 XLR. Competition in the wide-body market Wide-bodies are where the real clash of the titans takes place between the two firms. There are three distinct markets. Boeing 787 vs Airbus A330, Boeing 777 vs Airbus A350, and Boeing 747 vs Airbus A380. The first, the 787 vs the A330, has Airbus on the back foot. While the A330 was fantastic as a cheap, high-capacity aircraft, the entry of the 787 and its production ramping up has made the A330 look old. The A330 Neo revamp is an improvement and it sells cheaper than the 787, but sales numbers show the advantage going to Boeing. The Boeing 777 vs Airbus A350 is a different battle. Both aircraft lines have become flagships for each respective firm, and the winner in the future will determine who builds the most premium aircraft. Airbus has so far impressed airlines with its A350 series, but that may change with the 777X on the horizon. As for the Battle of the Jumbo Jets, we have the Boeing 747 and Airbus A380. Here, we only need to look at which is still available to order. Airbus has called it quits for the A380, and the Boeing 747 only has freighter orders remaining. We can firmly hand this win over to Boeing, but only because the 747 existed for many decades before the A380. Had the A380 been developed in the era of the 747, it may have been a different story. So, which airframe builder is better? Deciding on a better aircraft builder is a difficult choice, one that will divide up the comment sections and spur plenty of heated discussion. However, we're still going to try and provide an answer. If we were to compare both firms, who would logically be better in each market? In the narrow-body market, it seems that Airbus's A320 platform has been more flexible and more popular with airlines. We can chalk this up to the A320 following the Boeing 737's footsteps, overcoming design flaws in the latter, such as having wings higher up to accommodate larger, more powerful engines, and allowing the aircraft frame to stretch, allowing more flexibility in the market. All of this has been achieved while maintaining overall commonality. The wide-body market is a bit more complicated. It seems that both firms are playing a game of chess, with each successor airframe beating the older rival. Depending on the date, it could be that Airbus is in the lead, or that Boeing has the better wide-body design. All we can say is that in the wide-body market, 
Both firms are balanced and could easily outmatch each other with each aircraft generation. Cargo aircraft is another market that's typically overlooked, despite being an area where Boeing excels. In fact, Boeing produces several cargo aircraft, such as freight variants of the Boeing 767, 7478 and 777. Airbus only produces the A330F and is so far behind Boeing's offerings that catching up would take many years. But what about sales and deliveries? As Airbus was launched several years behind Boeing, it wouldn't be fair to look at aircraft deliveries as a success metric. However, as of December 2019, here are the numbers. Boeing has 19,913 aircraft deliveries, while Airbus has 12,626 aircraft deliveries. Another way to look at it is through aircraft orders. In doing so, we can see that Airbus comes out ahead, having 7,621 aircraft in its backlog. Meanwhile, Boeing has a backlog of 4,744 aircraft. Bottom line, Boeing versus Airbus. Overall, when it comes to these two titans, there is no real winner, but rather a well-established duopoly that provides airlines with a mix of comparable aircraft. It would not be beneficial for the industry if one airframe maker were to become a monopoly, nor would it be good for one to dominate a specific market. This competition spurs innovation, lower prices for airlines, and often results in lower ticket prices. With each new generation of aircraft, the industry as a whole gets better, and the passenger experience reaches new heights. Aviation fans should celebrate both Boeing and Airbus and how their competition has spurred each company to make better aircraft. And now, the obvious question. Who do you think is the better airframe builder? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the Simple Flying channel and be sure to click the notification bell.